What is up guys? Today we're going to be coding a progress bar in Lightning One Components, or LWC. Uh, you can see I already have the layout. If you want to pause the video and write this down or code this out, or follow the link in my description, and you can actually just copy and paste this from my GitHub. But if you're ready, we're actually going to go ahead and start with showing the Lightning Progress Bar. It is Lightning Dash Progress Dash Bar. And in this lightning progress bar, we're going to have a tag called variant, and we're going to make it circular. And this it just makes a progress bar circular. That is the modern thing nowadays, right? And then a value is going to be progress. And this progress we're going to create in JavaScript, and this is what's going to make sure that the progress bar fills. Uh, we can close that now. And we will close the lightning progress bar. We'll save it. You'll see it pop up on here. And what we also need to do is create that variable in our JavaScript. And we're going to go progress equals zero for now. As we go through the HTML and we figure out what variables we need, we're going to create that in the JavaScript. It's a lot easier if you do it that way, by the way. Um, so we can actually go ahead and code our inputs. Um, so we can actually go lightning input, dash input, and we'll go ahead and close it. And so these tags are going to be very similar. We're going to have an on change, and we want to keep keep track of the variables that we're going to use. And in order for do in order to do that, we're going to say find change text. And this function is going to get called every time the text is changed. Uh, we're going to do data dash bar, and I'll explain this later on. But it's going to equal first name, and we're going to say type equals it is a text input, and the label is going to say first name, first name, and the value is going to be first name. Now this is a variable in the JavaScript, so we're actually going to go ahead and copy that and go to the JavaScript and paste that. And you can assume we are going to need a last name as well. So we can say last name. And I'll go ahead and tell you we're going to do favorite color the exact same way. And let's go back to the HTML and create those inputs. So if you want to, you can actually just copy this. And we're going to paste it two more times. Right there, we're going to paste it under it. And just change those tags. So instead of first name, it's going to be last name. And make sure you do capitalize the N. As you can see, I did not, because we're going to need that for the variable. These, it should be the same. The value and the data dash bar should be the same. Um, label should say last name. And the value should say last name as well. This is going to be favorite color. Level is going to be fade color. And we have data as far. It's going to be favorite color. It's going to be the same as value. And you're going to see me capitalize just because I'm picky about how the UI looks. I'm going to actually save that and see what pops up. Also, first name, last name, favorite color, and this right here is actually going to be a type of color that LWC has implemented in their self. In their self, that made any sense. So you can actually pick the color, yeah, as you can see there, and it shows. But ignore that error because we're not done yet. All right, so we need a button so the user can submit. So we'll just make a simple break statement right there, get some space going. And so we'll need a lightning button. And let's go ahead and close this. And the tags we're going to use is it's going to have a label that's going to say submit. We do have an on click, which most buttons do. And we're going to say form submit. This is the function that gets called when you click this button. And we're also going to have a button called reset. So if you want to copy that, and just reset these values, and we can say reset. I'm going to save that as well. You should see these buttons pop up. You can see I forgot the equal sign there. Save that now. 
You see these buttons pop up. Now there's not much space, so in this bottom button, we're actually gonna add a class equals, and there's a thing called SLDS dash P dash around underscore medium. So it's basically saying the padding around this button is gonna be medium, and you'll see how it looks a little more pretty. Cool. So now they can press, press these buttons. Let's go ahead and create uh, these functions as well. So we need a form submit function and a reset function in the JavaScript. So we have a form submit. And we also have a reset. Now you can also tell that the reset is just going to reset everything. Um, let's go to the HTML. Cool, so we have gotten this far. I uh, already had this in here, and basically what this is gonna say is we're gonna say if the form is not complete and they hit this submit button like it would right now, then we need to say, hey, you need to fill out the whole form. So we're gonna need a form complete boolean and a submit click boolean. So let's go ahead and copy this one. And we are gonna say form submit equals false. And what was it, form click, right? Clicked. Equals false as well. Alright, let's finish this HTML out. So we actually don't need to do anything in here. This is already done. And you see down here at the bottom, we're going to say, hey, if the form's complete and they uh, click the submit button, basically we're going to show them their name, their last name, and their favorite color. Um, you can see this lightning input is the exact same as the favorite color up here, except for we're going to do an extra tag on disabled, and we're going to make that equal to true. And basically it's going to make it to where they can't pick anything. So wherever they pick it here, should show down here, but they can only pick in this upper area, upper form area. Cool. So really that's all we need in the HTML side. Now we just need to make the JavaScript side work. And this is where it gets fun, and yes, a little complicated. Now we do need a bind text function, which binds our text. And this is gonna take in an event. And the reason why it's gonna take in an event is because like I said before, that data-var tag on the uh, inputs is what we're gonna use, and I'll show you that. So we're gonna use these. And this is like a dynamic bind text function, basically. So we're gonna grab this var, and we can actually set that var in the JavaScript, whatever they inputted. So we can say var var name equals event dot target dot data set dash var. What this is gonna do, I'll explain it one more time, so it's gonna to target to the data set to the var, and you can see that the data then it's going to go to the dot var, which is this one, and it's going to grab this text. Data set is uh, on all lightning inputs, and it's something you can do to kind of keep track of things. You can don't have to call this var, you can call it anything that you wanted to, but for us, we're going to call it var because it's keeping track of the variable. So now that we have the variable name, we can say this brackets var name, which is a string. What that does is it dynamically go, goes and gets that variable, and we can actually set it to event.target.value. It's going to be whatever they type in every time. After that, we can say console log, just so you can see, console log this bracket our name. And what I'm going to show you here is if you hit the console down at the bottom, or if you're just following along, you can see that it's doing it as we go. And if we switch, it's in it as we go as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to keep track of this progress bar, right? And if you change this progress bar to 50, you can see that the blue will go about halfway, right? So we need to increment it by a certain number, basically 100 divided by three, because there's three of these, and the progress bar is made out of 100. And every time they type something in these text fields, we're gonna incre inc increment the progress bar by 33. 
Um, so in order to do that, our wish, we could just say this dot progress plus equals 33, we'll say 34, just because good measures. But we cannot, as you can see, it will work after we set this back to zero. It's gonna be missing a couple of things. So we can do boom, and it does it right. But it's doing it on every letter. So we need to make sure to do it only on the first letter, right? So how we do that is we're gonna say, uh, if this var name dot length, because it is a string, they're all gonna be strings, equal equals one. Then what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna do that right there. And that will work. So it is gonna get a little more complicated than that because as you can see, it works fine. It works fine, but for favorite color, when they pick one, it does not. And the reason for that, guys, is because favorite color would never equal size of one or length of one. It always equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it automatically goes to seven because that's what the RGB is. So what we need to do is make a case for, say, let's if the bar name is favorite color, right? Because in the HTML, we're going to go to... Uh, get the data dash bar. If it's favorite color, we want to say if it's equal to seven, then we want to increment it as well. So if var name, and you can actually just say var name equals equals favorite color, favorite color, because that's the uh, string we passed in, and this var name dot length because it is a string equals equals seven we can say this dot progress plus equals 34 cool and that is all we need and you can see that this will increment when we choose the favorite color now so first name last name favorite color awesome so they completed it hundred percent now we need to make this form submit button work so where we put the form submit buttons. Let's make that work. And let's do the submit button first because the reset function is gonna be pretty easy. So the form uh, submit, basically what we wanna do is how do we know the form submitted, right? Uh, or how do we know the form's complete? Well, we know the form's complete when the progress bar gets to 100. So if we're incrementing the progress bar every time they complete something, we can just say, hey, that progress is greater than or equal to 100, well, then the form's complete, right? So we can say if, if this dot progress, progress is greater than or equal to that question mark, greater than or equal to 100, we can say this dot form complete equals true, and this dot submit clicked equals true as well. And we can say else, you can say this dot form for safety measures, form complete, because they could click it a bunch of times, right? And we want to say this dot submit clicked equals true. And we're actually going to set this to false. I apologize. I'll explain that in a minute. And let's go ahead and do the reset function. Now, the reset function is going to be simple, guys. You just reset all the variables. So, we can actually just copy this and we can paste it. Let's make this look a little neat. That is gonna work just fine. Awesome, so let's save this. And what we're gonna do is go to the HTML and let's see if we're missing something or if this works fine. So they say Peyton, and we'll say sky. Their color is blue, and they're gonna click submit and do it. Where's it at? There it is. Okay, blue, submit, and it says you are Peyton Sky.
favorite color is here. And like I was talking about earlier, you can't choose favorite color down here. Google said disable to true. But if you were to do anything like that, it would change your favorite color and it would also change your last name. So let's see if this reset button works. It does not. Now let's figure out why this reset button doesn't work. Ah, okay, so remember, and you probably caught this already, and I hope you did, you have to do this dot. That way we know what variables we're calling. Let's that, let this refresh. Pick in this, have a color, green, submit, awesome, reset, cool. And you can see that progress bar resets to zero as well. That way they can go and type in their stuff. That is the uh, progress bar walkthrough, guys. This is not a super dynamic progress bar, and I'll show you why. So if they do Peyton and they do last, and they go choose um, basically a favorite color, what can happen is you can go last, Peyton, and it's submit. So obviously the progress bar is 100, but they deleted their first and last name. So it's not very dynamic, but it lets you grasp the concept of the progress bar. And you can also see that we hit submit, which I forgot to show you, but I'm showing you now, is we're just saying, hey, if this form's not complete, let's show this in a red text, right? And of course, you can see if you complete it, submit it, it resets. But if you want to learn how to do the progress bar dynamically and make it to where the progress bar always follows the text, no matter if you delete it or not, you can click this video right here. It is a bit longer and a very logical, so if you are willing to follow along and you need to learn it, it will help you out a lot. And But if you have any questions or anything, just post them in the comments. Hopefully this video was helpful, and thanks guys.